From the San Diego Union Tribune, this is The Conversation. I'm Abby. And I'm Luis. We know you're flooded with news, memes, and all kinds of information each day. And we know that can be a little overwhelming. But if there's one story that will get you talking, tweeting, and caught up for the day, this is the one. Hello and welcome to a special Comic Con edition of The Conversation. Hello, I'm Luis. I'm Abby, and we have a special guest, our producer, Laura Hockley. Oh. Woo! Hello. I had to say my name because no one else could. We are so grateful to have her here and yeah. grateful to have her help on this podcast. She is basically the brains of the operation here. Uh, 100%. The, the whole reason why we have a podcast, she's our uh, producer who puts, it basically has helped us put everything together. Yeah, so a big thanks to her. And on to this episode, uh, one of several we'll be doing, specifically about Comic-Con. Uh, this is the San Diego Union Tribune's podcast. Uh, we live right here in San Diego. We could see the convention center from our newsroom. And so, of course, we want to be bringing you all the coverage, info, guides, everything you need to know for Comic-Con. And that includes this podcast, where we will be giving you a sort of survival guide and as many tips as we can fit into one episode uh, for what you need to know if you'll be coming to Comic-Con. And if you're not coming, maybe you can learn a little something, too. Yeah, okay. So, real quick, uh, we're going to do like a fun lightning round, you know, thing where we each say our favorite thing about Comic-Con. And you want me, you want me to go first? You go. You okay. got it. Uh, first and fa- f- most Favorite thing about Comic-Con is the people. I like that downtown San Diego gets super crowded. I know that's not everybody's favorite thing, but to me, it's like I just love seeing a downtown city alive and vibrant and everybody just happy to be there. I That is a great answer because I do love downtown. Uh, but I, this is my 10th year going to Comic-Con. I started going in 2012 as a professional um, and so I've, I've, dude, I mean, I don't know if we're allowed to call ourselves experts, but I'm an expert. Definitely. Um, I believe you're an expert. And yeah. my favorite, uh, my favorite activity at Comic-Con is the really in the weeds, nerdy panels, like the writing panels, the editing mm. panels, um, panels about books, movies you've never heard about, those kind of things. Awesome. And this is Abby talking. It'll be my fifth year at Comic-Con. I am... Not probably as much of an expert as Lara, but I have been going every single uh, year these past four years. And I have slept outside in Hall H line, so I take that as my claim to oh, fame. Oh, that is of good. Feeling like I know what's going on at Comic Con. That, act, that may, I'd say that makes you professional. Yeah, all right. So there's my <laughs> Comic Con cred. Uh, but my favorite thing is probably, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like to hear this one, but I just love seeing the stars of these shows, uh, these movies. And um, the fandoms that come with them. I mean, sometimes the fandoms we all know can be a little uh, overwhelming or, um, you know, a little passionate. And it's so great that they get to meet up with each other. And I have had some great interactions with people in the fandoms. Uh, but seeing, the, seeing them see their stars and their heroes is so great. And I just love watching. You never know who's going to pop up on the streets of Comic-Con uh, outside of the convention center. You never know. No. On the convention floor. Uh, more on that later. But that's our intro. Actually, you did just remind me. The very first night I slept in line for Hall H was for Lost. Because I'm that old. Oh. And that's when that was a really big deal. Oh. Uh, Luis loves Lost. Oh, it was so good. And while we were in line, <laughs> my dad and I left to get food. And that's when Damon Lindelof and mm. uh, all the creators of the show came by and gave donuts and shook hands oh. to everyone in line. And, and you missed you sleeping. There. And I wasn't there. Wow. But that is the magic of Comic-Con. That this, people will just come up to you, whether they've created, whether yeah. they're fans of what you like or whether they've created what you like. Everyone's yeah. there for the same reason. And there, there's tip number one right there. We're already flying around with the <laughs> tips here is that you never know who you could see in line, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, I should p- probably clarify, we should probably clarify that this what this podcast is, is not going to be about, and it's not going to be about, like, the very deep, in the weeds, you know, stuff about Comic-Con because... I don't know. I just, it just, that seems like there's definitely plenty of sources for, for that kind of stuff. Like, you know, who's, who's behind what work, you know, and all that stuff. I think it's going to be very over the surface, you know? Yeah. 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 A good, uh, way to catch up on what you need to know. And, uh, if you're, you know, heading out here, flying out here, maybe you could listen while you're packing. 
get some good advice. Or maybe while you're waiting in line and you're looking for some tips, we'll yeah. have that too. So. Okay. Although, if you do want to hear an e- in the weeds one, email me at lara at hockeyly at sduniontribune.com. We'll, we'll make one for you. Yeah, absolutely. We love hearing your guys' feedback. Listeners, we're uh, hoping to hear from you at all times on this podcast. Let us know what you think. But in the meantime, Luis is going to start us off. He has a survival guide that he'll be putting up on San Diego Union Tribune.com. That's where you can find all our coverage of Comic Con. Uh, we'll be jumping in when we can with a little advice too, yeah. but here we go. And I'll try to make it, I mean, I'm trying to make this as kind of comprehensive, but also not too overwhelming. Uh, I did, I start off with the list of must have items to have on you at Comic Con. And one of them, I think like the number one that I put is cash, you know, yes. uh, cash, you know, preferably $1 bills or $5 bills just to make quick transactions. That those, sort of stuff. those ATM fees at the convention center add up. <laughs> yeah, they, they add up. Uh, portable power, that is whether it's a plug-in charger or portable battery. Uh, hand sanitizer. Yes, I mean, yes. you're shaking hands with people, you're touching surfaces, you know. Yes. Um, and, and, and you know, sometimes you know, like you'll just kind of take off in the middle of something. You need to get a quick bite, you know, and you don't have time to go wash your hands. True. Uh, deodorant. Yes, Please. that's a big one. <laughs> It's my number one tip I always That's, give people. Uh, yeah, if you've never been to Comic Con before, uh, you might want to get your smeller prepared because it's yeah. a blast of yeah. the senses. Yeah. And yeah. it seems to always be one of the hottest weekends <laughs> of the summer for whatever reason. We have such great weather here. A lot of 70 degree weeks, nice weather, but hang on, it's probably going to be blazing hot. Okay, this one feels like uh, it... it you know, it doesn't even need to be mentioned, but it's going to be mentioned. It's comfortable shoes. You know, you're going to be doing a lot of walking. You so know? true. Uh, so you know, that's why I've never cosplayed because I just don't understand how some of those people can walk around in those shoes all day. Huge yeah. props to those who go great lengths to pull off the perfect yeah. cosplay. Yeah, uh, band aids. Uh, I've definitely seen people wear like they wear certain kind of shoes where uh, your shoes is rubbing like with your ankle, mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes that's that's blisters. really good. Blisters, yeah. you know, anything that's rubbing on you, um, cuts, you know, you never know. I, I I have, um, I'm not sure if they'll be there again this year, but for the last three years, we have seen a cart uh, going around downtown that's a uh, cosplay repair cart. Yeah. And I do know um, if if you happen to just need a Band-Aid or some aid yourself, even if you're not in cosplay, they'll help you out. Yeah. Um, but to know. always... Band-Aids, good idea. Yeah, my first Comic-Con, that's when I met that couple that did uh, cosplay repairs. They would just go running around, you know, all over just doing repairs. Yeah. Uh, That was very nice of them. They did it for free. Uh, Next up, uh, water bottle. You know, uh, again, it's one of those things like it doesn't – I feel like you shouldn't need to have to say it, but – you know, you will need hydration. You will be dehydrated. You will be doing a lot of walking. You will be drinking a lot of water. And uh, lines can be long for yes. restaurants, concession stands, yes. etc. So having your own, yes. pretty awesome. And I believe those concession stands, the bottle, uh, the bottle of water will cost you another $4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Sharpies, you never know who you're going to run into. Uh, also for parents... Uh, it's good to write down your phone number on the skin of your child, whether that's on <laughs> their arm or their back or somewhere where, you know. Forehead. Yeah, the forehead, <laughs> you know, write your phone number there because your kid might get lost. <laughs> that that's, I've never heard that Fair trick, advice. but it makes sense, actually. Fair advice. Uh, and I, one, one, one item that I have, like the last one that I have here is uh, bags, extra bags. Just carry like those you know, extra bags because you never know, it, you know, how much swag you're going to get. Like you get a lot of swag, but it's going to be, you know, to a point where your bag is going to get full. Yeah. Can I, I want to add one more to sure. your very fine yes. l- list, Luis, but one that saved my, uh, saved my hide and breath a couple times is a toothbrush and toothpaste because you yes. never know when you're going to say that line looks pretty long. I should probably get in it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and sleep yeah. on the sidewalk. And sleep all night. Wow. So That's I, great I'm a big fan of the toothbrush. Yeah. And, and I would add protein bars. That's my need to pack thing that I take every single year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get you through the long days. And if you uh, if you forget any of those things, there's a CVS right on market that 
also, it's the funniest place because um, during Comic Con it'll turn into people doing their errands and then <laughs> girls in fairy wings looking for uh, you know glitter glue to repair their their yeah. their dresses. It's it's pretty funny in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, moving right along, uh, I do have a, a, a list of apps that you should download. I'm probably going to be adding more to it, but uh, San Diego Comic Con International has an official app bo- available for both Android and iPhone. You should definitely download it. Uh, San Diego Public Transportation app, uh, the MTS, uh, they they have a map which tells you the schedules, how much it costs, and uh, good one. Uh, where to get like. You know, charge your uh, what's it called the the card where you pay. Yeah, trolley um, card. Uh, not just that, but like transportation. There's like so many options for transportation. A lot of people do a lot of walking, obviously. Um, and uh, you know, if you're walking around with your mobile phone, you can probably just do a Google search or look through Google Maps and find whatever you're looking for nearby. Yeah. Uh, but one thing people should know is that this is probably going to be this is the first Comic Con where we have dockless so. bikes. Oh yeah, these uh, oh, line bikes yeah. And, and scooters and scooters all over downtown. So it will be interesting. Yeah, the best advice on that, <laughs> and Luis is probably going to have this info on his survival guide. But if you can download the apps ahead of time, yes. If you don't have a good long data plan that uh, you can use to download those on site, get those ahead of time because you'll see a green bike or an orange bike or a yeah. yellow bike or a scooter, and you'll need to have your debit card info already in those apps. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Like you definitely should take the time to set up your credit card or whatever because it will take a little while to. Yeah. Do you guys foresee anything, I mean, anything really different? Because that boggles my mind. If if yeah. anyone hasn't been to San Diego since the dockless bikes have been in town. It, it's a revolution. It, it's a revolution, yeah. It changes the entire atmosphere of downtown. And now, like, adding however many people go to Comic-Con, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing at least at least five injuries. Is that... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah and please there, be and extremely careful nervous. out there. And there's definitely some very pretty uh, specific rules to using these uh, scooters and the bicycles. Yes. Uh, just some safety, you know, guidelines. Go check them out, you know. Helmets. Uh, get to know, like, all the rules. Um, there's also going to be plenty of ride share. Uh, Lyft and Uber are all over the place. You know, they you can get any of those. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the cars that you're going to be seeing there are probably going to be Lyft and Ubers. There is um there's another like kind of a local San Diego one that I I got away with using the first two days last year until everyone else figured out the secret and and they got it too, uh, but there's there's something in San Diego called Fred and oh it, the Fred it stands for the free ride everywhere downtown that's free rides yeah, everywhere so, so for those who free. okay it, it's let's describe it for for those who are not familiar with it it's basically kind of like a it's half golf cart half car yeah right? yeah there, there yeah, it is. yeah. it's good. like a it's like an open and billboard. air yeah it's like an open air little vehicle and it's electric right yeah yeah it's electric and it's like a you can probably fit like five five people? yeah yeah and it's like it's put on by the it's completely free um although i think there are tip jars. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, it's com- it's put on by the San Diego Tourism Authority. So it's completely free. Um, and the app is called the the Free Ride app, um, which is a-, a weird name, but it'll that's what yeah. It's called. I'll I'll have to add it add a link to my um, uh, my list. But yeah, that. That's and then good. there's also the free shuttles. That's how I tend to get to Comic Con. Is uh, if you look on Comic Con's website, they have just these massive buses that go around the city picking people up at hotels mm-hmm. and other uh, major stops. I tend to park somewhere pretty far away from Comic Con and then get on the shuttle and ride it there. It's one of the best times to meet other Comic Con goers, yes. uh, see fun cosplayers in the wild, and um, just you know have a nice, relaxing, air conditioned. Right. One thing that like I I do remember, I I think we should definitely point out is that no matter if if people are wondering like oh well which mode of transportation is simpler or more convenient or cheapest none. or yeah, yeah. <laughs> none. good point. everything's gonna be jam packed everything's yeah, yeah. gonna be uh, I mean you yeah. remember the the metro the the trolley I mean 
we I missed it a couple we missed it a couple times because it was just so packed. Yeah. We couldn't even get in. And maybe that is going to be the advantage of the dockless bikes this year is that they can kind of weave in and out of things, but with so many people out walking around, I mean, yeah. please just be careful out there. Be courteous to your fellow convention goers and to San Diego locals who will just be <laughs> out minding their business and be alarmed to see Spider-Man riding by on a bike. Uh, well, this this is the first nice. year, too, that they are closing Harbor Boulevard right in front of the convention center. Great point. And so I wonder yeah. if that will help anything. Yeah, I hope so. I think so. I, I guess. hope so. We'll yeah. see. Um, Great point. If you're feeling defiant and want to uh, drive your car to downtown... <laughs> uh, there are definitely, there's definitely parking, public parking all over the place. Uh, there's a couple apps that you can download. Spot Hero helps you find all the nearby parking lots and the price. That's available for Android and iPhone. And this other one called Parking Panda, which I haven't checked out, but I'm, I'm definitely interested in it, uh, does the same thing. Oh, and I'm also going to like throw in a link in there. Uh, if you get your car towed, oh. you know, I'll put the phone number in there, you know, the email. Everything that you need to know, like, if you get a toad. That's helpful. Yeah, that is super. That is nice. Hopefully that doesn't happen to any of our listeners. <laughs> no. But uh, we're trying to cover you with every info, every piece of What, uh, what other tips info come you to need. mind? Yeah, so I have a few tips. Should I just go through go, the list of them? Go for it, yeah. Okay. Uh, these are based on experience. I just have, I picked four of my favorite words of advice to give you. Uh, here they are. Number one is make friends. Uh, especially if you're in line, you cannot, it cannot be understated how helpful it can be to have friends, whether they hold the line for you, whether they're going to go get pizza and they offer you some, whether they have some sort of inside scoop on the upcoming season of your favorite show, a cool panel they've been to that they can brief you on, uh, some good guidance to what's on the convention floor in the exhibit halls. Um, just make, you know, everyone's really nice at Comic-Con. I would say for the most part, people are mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. And I've made a lot of friends um, just kind of hanging out, uh, waiting for things. People are very nice and helpful. And you can get some good uh, scoop and good hints that way. So I still have line friends from <laughs> yeah. la- from last year when I spent uh, 14 hours in a Game of Thrones line. Oh, yeah. We're and all great friends. <laughs> yeah, when those lines are so long, it's nice to... Have some people having your back and, you know, watching your spot, watching your stuff, whatever it takes. Um, number two is, I've posted this on San Diego com before. I know not everyone's interested in this sort of thing, but for those who are, I have a few tips for where to see celebrities. Uh, celebrities may not be the word. Stars, actors, uh, directors. There have been producers, you know, all your favorite yeah. movie, Content film. Creators. Yeah. YouTube stars. I mean, all these types of people are going to be at Comic-Con. And there are five major places to see them that are my secrets, my places to watch. Uh, One is the Fifth Avenue Landing behind the convention center. They have these huge, huge yachts uh, and boats where people do interviews. Um, IMDB usually has a boat and people go out there for interviews. So you can watch the people uh, coming over for their interviews uh, Justin Timberlake has been spotted out there, among many others. It's my goal in life to get to one of those boat parties one day. Oh, I'm going to get on one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one of the years I also saw the Walking Dead cast. Um, I heard Henry Cavill made his way back there one year, so that's a great place to be. Uh, Hilton San Diego Bayfront, a lot of them stay there, are headed to their panels there. That's just a great place to linger around to see and be seen. Uh, the balcony above Nobu in the gas lamp quarter That, uh, a lot of interviews seem to take place up there from year to year. I'm not sure which studios or which um, news outlets are up there, but you'll see celebrities, stars of shows, hanging over the balcony, waving to fans, and it's so much fun to hang around over there and see who might pop out. Last one is convention floor, or last two, convention floor. You never know if uh, stars will be undercover in masks. That happens so much. Just to name a few, Daniel Radcliffe, Ryan Reynolds, Brian Cranston, Maisie Williams, Peter Jackson, and Hugh Jackman have all worn masks to go wander around. Well, and I don't know if you remember this, Comic-Con but Lupita goers. Nyong'o, um, she wore this mask and she was basically like dancing like crazy all over the yes. floor. And how does no one realize and what's then, happening? Yeah, and then like later on, it was like in the music video, it was like, oh, you know, and then she just took off the mask. Yeah, so if you see cameras knew. following a masked person, that's <laughs> yes. clue number yes. one. Yes. Or clue number two, 
Uh, if someone dressed as Superman is hanging around all the Superman stuff, or someone dressed as mm -hmm. Aquaman <laughs> is talking to other Aquamans, these are just some ideas. Or if you see a bunch of big burly guys in suits. Yeah. I, I, I ran into somebody who looked a lot like Anthony Bourdain once, and then I looked up and said, sorry, and then I noticed he was surrounded by, I was like, oh, that guy that looked like Anthony Bourdain was surrounded by oh, a bunch yeah. of, oh, that was Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, that, oh yeah, my gosh, it is probably wow. a celebrity. Um, yeah, and then the last one is Hall H Line. Those are the biggest panels, the biggest shows, etc. Uh, the stars have been known to go out in the line and mingle with the fans there. Um, so there you go. Uh, my last tip, well, tip number three is that the stars do go undercover, so keep your eyes peeled. And my last tip is that the public library, the Central Public Library of San Diego, cannot be understated as a crucial resource. If you're downtown and need a break, need Wi-Fi, air conditioning, uh, a water fountain, a bathroom, I mean, all of those things are great about the library. But I am just a huge supporter of libraries, and we have a really cool library downtown. It's relatively new. Uh Obviously, we're going to have all the resources there that a good library has, computers. Um, and they also have some Comic-Con events there, including a super cool, um, they're calling it the, uh, let's see, Comic-Con and Fandom Podcast Web Series programs that will be going on throughout the whole uh, event where podcasts will be doing live recordings there in the library. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and here on The that. Conversation, we love to support other podcasts. We do podcast recommendations. So I wanted to make sure to mention that. And some of them are said to be uh, interactive, so fans could have a chance to appear in new episodes of their favorite podcasts and web series. So podcasts, web series, they'll be taking place at the library. Check them out. Uh, go to the library website or on Comic-Con's official website, and they have info there. And another one is the Comic Con Comic Conference for Educators and Librarians. That is a super cool event. It's five days free um, with your Comic Con badge. I think some of them might even be free for the public, but check out that on San Diego Central Library's website. It's uh, to help educators learn to use comic books in their teaching uh, with their students. It's just a really interesting and cool event that I've seen pop up over the past few years. That so check cool. out the library. Yeah. yeah. Whew. Those are my tips. And Lara is up. I've got some good, uh, just basic beginner tips. Although, when you mentioned uh, the library is a great source to relax, the Hilton Bayfront is a great resource to drink. If you are into Ooh. that, if you want a little break from the convention floor and just want to sit down with a nice view of the convention yeah, and have a drink, watching. Yeah. people watching at that, at that, the two um, hotels right on either side are, I mean, those are a godsend if, if you're over 21 and want to take a break. A plus. <laughs> um, and, uh, I mean, these are basic things that... A lot of people know, but just good things to keep in mind um, if you're a beginner, too. You know, in my opinion, the best panels aren't always in the biggest rooms. When you get in the big rooms, you're basically, you are watching advertisements. Uh, you're watching people who are uh, want you to watch the next season of, well, Westworld, even though, <laughs> uh, much to my dismay, uh, HBO won't be there this year. Um, but I've seen... Um, you know, really big A-name directors and actors go in these small panels because yeah. it's passion projects that they want to deal with. I've seen Mark Hamill um, in a small project because it was a cartoon he was doing. It wasn't Star Wars. Um, I've seen David Fincher because it was a, a small project he was doing and it wasn't, you know, the next. Yeah. I can't even name a big David Fincher movie right now. Great advice. Um, but I'm just a big, a big fan of those smaller ones. Yeah. Um, David Fincher? You mean like uh, Fight Club? Yeah. And, and I was going to say the next Fight Club. And I was like, Lara, that's a 20-year-old <laughs> well, reference. You can't do that anymore. He did the social network. Yeah. You know? World oh, World that's World. right. He did social you know. network. Oh, that's Curious right. Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Google. Um, that was a quick Google. Um, and speaking of the panels... Don't be that person with the cringe-worthy Q&A. Oh, if you've ever been to so a panel, true. everyone gives a nice speech, and then there's a Q&A session, and inevitably there's somebody who will ask the panel if they'll read their script or oh. cast them in a movie or hire them or, you oh, know, really? can I take you're a hot is in the really, question. Does yeah. that really happen? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the I... poor I, South Park guys. Last I saw a South Park oh, panel, and they were like, God. I, you know, I... And the guy had a very sad oh. sob story and then it was can can you please read this and that's all I and the guys were very oh. nice and they just yeah. said I'm sorry legally we're not allowed to, to for you to hand out that script but yeah. it's just the whole audience groans if you have a question 
ask a question. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I've definitely That's seen like advice. where questions like kind of the the preface, they preface the question with like a really long. Yeah, yeah. you changed my life. Theory. Yeah, or this quest, is my favorite like, show just, of all time. Like, you know. And it's, it is hard not to do that. It's very overwhelming yes, to see your favorite is. show uh, creators and cast in front of you. Uh, but but it's other people's favorite too. Yeah. And when you take half the Q and A time to tell them how much you love them, yeah, other people don't get asked. Yeah, questions. yeah. Um, Great advice. That's why we have Twitter. Just yeah, follow exactly. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, <Tweet laughs> follow them. on Twitter. Uh, this is an age old Comic Con, um, just any convention rule. The five two one rule. Ooh. In the minimum, five two one. In a minimum, for every day at a con, you need five hours of sleep, at least two meals, and at least one shower. What? Oh, well, if you just <laughs> good advice. If you honestly. keep those minimum things in mind, you'll be okay. But I, I've gotten oh, it, it's to the point where my Comic Con partner and I used to always make ourselves nauseous. Like on oh, Sundays, we yeah. were just sick all day, and we'd be awake at two a.m. in the Doctor Who line because when you don't sleep, you get a little sick, <laughs> oh. right? And I just you know, oh. yeah, please sleep. It's it's worth it. And That's it's the sort of thing you have to remind yourself of too, because you when you're just racing around, there's so much yeah. stuff to see and do. And Suddenly you haven't eaten for a yeah. day. And, and then it's it's no fun when yeah. you're in the panel you've stayed up all night for, but you can't stay awake. Yeah. yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Ooh, good. Good. Um, That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. Uh, I spoke to Carrie Dixon, who is the editor-in-chief of the uh, San Diego Comic-Con unofficial blog, and uh, she gave me some really good pointers. Uh, one of them was that uh, you shouldn't uh, overbook yourself, like... She said, like, mm. pick one thing that you really, yeah. really, really want to do. It's hard to do. But... And try to, like, make loose arrangements or loose plans for other stuff. But by all means, don't overbook it. Don't do. Don't try to do it That's all. That's smart. You True. Know, just leave things for spontaneous things because yeah. apparently those are the most fun. That's smart. And it, it's sad because when I started doing this 10 years ago, it was. You created a whole day schedule. Yeah. But you can't do that anymore. You yeah. just can't. You need to pick one, maybe two things. True. Yeah. Um, I'll usually do, again, if you're older, like uh, a day event and then pick one like party or night thing you want to go to. Yeah. And those are, that's the hardest thing for me is you are running around all day in the sun, your feet hurt and there's still fun things to do at night. I know. And it's like you need a midday, like where we all stop and take a nap and come back. (laughs) And then I'll see all these, all these ladies go out at night and they are dressed to the nines. And I'm like, how did you do that? I'm still all sweaty and gross. That's my next business idea. Just rent out pods. There you go. Oh, like smart. pods to, just to take a nap. Oh, I would love you know? that. Yeah. If there is AC in there, <laughs> oh, I'll give you a million dollars for that. Uh, I, we already covered this earlier, or uh, several ways, and we should all know, but um, another ABC, always be charging. Always yes. be charging oh, yes. your phone. Yeah. And that uh, constant, the Wi-Fi at the convention center, it oh. always searches for it, so it really eats up your battery. Yeah. True. So always be charging. Wise words. And then I have, oh. Oh, no, I have two more. This is actually, this is my secret one. On Sunday, there are sales. Ooh. If you want something and you don't want to pay full price, you wait till Sunday because those people Ooh. do not want to put that whatever it is you want back on their truck. <laughs> True. Um, and if you if you end up closing, uh, I've closed the convention center down a few times, they, they just end up throwing stuff in piles. Ooh. Especially the Dark Horse booth. Um, <gasps> everything there gets on sale on Sunday. Wow. That's it. Uh, as yeah. you heard it here I'm first, definitely, folks. I'm definitely <laughs> going to go there on Sunday. Um, and uh, the last one, again, that Abby mentioned before, and I'm just going to close with my little little story. Um, I first started coming to Comic-Con, you know, a decade ago, and it was a big, big deal with um, my dad and my uncles and my male cousins. It was none of the other ladies, but um, we'd all come, and it was a big, big deal. Um, you know, we'd cross the border, and, and my uncle would do Star Wars jokes and say, these are not the drones you're looking for. We're going to (laughs) Comic-Con. And Border Patrol's like, okay, sir, just please leave. Um, (laughs) It was always a big, fun family event. And we'd take a cooler and we'd we'd pack sandwiches. And I remember driving under the um, the 163 on Balboa, the Balboa Park Bridge, and thinking, I like this town. I should move here. So I did. And I moved here because of Comic-Con. I ended up getting a job in news. And now um, I get a go as a professional. And it's, it's something that I see... I used to want to be a part of this world because everyone is so nice and everyone loves the same things. And no matter yeah. if you love different fandoms, if you love different things, everyone comes to Comic-Con to be together and revel in everything they love. And um, I'm just Aww. so happy I get to be 
a part of that. And I want everyone else who's never experienced Comic-Con to see it, too. Yeah. It's really, it's tiring and it's exhausting, but it's very special. Well, that just gave me the most if warm and fuzzy <laughs> feeling. It's the one place where a lot of people who aren't accepted at home are accepted. Yeah. So be nice, because everyone's there to be accepted. Yeah, and especially some people, it's their first time. Others, they've been there year after year after year, and hopefully everyone can get along together um, and look out for each other. Yeah. Because there's traffic, there's harsh conditions, there's a lot going on out there, so yeah. uh, it's nice if it's everyone is... It's a war is, zone. We're in it together. <laughs> it's nice yeah. if everyone's cool to each other. Is that I, it, guys? Want to wrap up with yeah, our favorite yeah. memories of Comic-Con? Or oh, God, I have so What are you so looking forward many. to? I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, just to see, like, the installations. To me, like, yeah. walking around the installations and checking out, like, all these, like, different shows. And um, I- I'm I'm kind of in- interested. Because, like, I don't know if you remember Mr. Robot. They, yep. you know, take yep. out the store, you yep. know, to have it be all about Mr. Robot. Um, they also have, like, some really interesting, fun things that you could do, you know, t- take a lot of photos. I mean, it's. Yeah, 10 years, Lara. You got to have a few. I have so many good memories. I just honestly <laughs> can't. Um, I really can. I And I uh, I interviewed Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, and, uh, and uh, I, I've got to interview, and Dan Harmon, like some of my favorite celebrities. But honestly, I'll go with, I, I got to be on my favorite podcast, because uh, the magic of oh, Comic-Con, like one, yeah. one year they just called me out. Uh, Comic-Con, really amazing things happen. But my favorite, I'm just going to go with last year. Uh, again, I waited in the Game of Thrones experience for 14 hours. I, I, I'm usually not a friend line person. Mm-hmm. I didn't really want to I talk to these people for 14 hours. But, <laughs> mm, all right, you keep talking about Game of Thrones. We ended up banding together with this big group, and uh, they were cutting the line off at the end of the day. And they were telling us all day, you don't want to wait here. You might not get in. And we're like, oh, come on. They're open for another 14 hours. We'll get in. Yeah. Uh, uh, but they kept counting, and we kept, we're like, hey, guys, we, we kept, you know, we were trying to make this big move. They were counting the last people in for the very end of the day, and the very last person was me. And it oh, got our whole yeah. group in, and wow. we started cheering and partying. <laughs> we had a name for ourselves. It was Game of Thrones, and a, a beetle landed on me. And this lady's like, that's luck. You know, you're luck. We're Team Scarab. We're House Scarab. We had this uh, big uh, line, and we are, uh, anyway, we had a blast in there together because yeah, we were the last people see, in. there you go. And we are meeting each other this year. Awesome. Because we are friends now. That is actually Friends really following, cool. saw, following each other on social media all day, so. That is it's such just, a classic Comic Con. It's story. magic. Yep, yeah. that's so true. Uh, favorite memory? I would just say that I was very moved last year to see how a uh, Wonder Woman was really one of the biggest highlights of cosplayers, and also um, just the, the hype around the movie was so huge at Comic Con. And I love Wonder Woman, so I loved being around that. I got to interview a lot of different. Uh, women who were dressed as Wonder Woman and ask them what the movie means to them um, and what dressing up as her and what she means to them. And, you know, some liked the new movie. Some were more into the comic books or uh, some of the more classic renditions of Wonder Woman. Uh, But I'm really excited for this upcoming year to see what unfolds with Wonder Woman because we know the second movie is coming out and I can't wait to find out what is revealed or not revealed. Uh, But I just love the Wonder Woman um, aspect of Comic Con, which I'm so glad that we'll be back this year in one fashion or another. So if you're out there and your uh, your cosplay is Wonder Woman, hit me up, <laughs> tweet at me at Abby Hamblin. I love to see yeah, what's and going on. Follow us on Twitter at SUT Ideas. We're going to be doing some live blogging and live tweeting. Yes. I mean, we're going to be doing so much other fun stuff. Uh, but yeah. Can I also shout out, uh, we will also have all of our Comic-Con coverage on our uh, San Diego Union Tribune uh, YouTube page. Yes, yes, you yes. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of that stuff. That, that's it? Yeah, and yeah. if you're listening to this episode, check out our podcast, The Conversation, on SoundCloud, your favorite listening app, because we're going to have several other Comic-Con episodes. So we hope you like this one. We'll have a few others. Check them out, please. And thanks for listening. Have fun this year. Woo! May the force be with you. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) The conversation can be found online at sandiegounionitribune.com slash opinion and on Twitter at S-D-U-T-Ideas. 
You can find me on Twitter at Abby Hamblin. And I'm at Run Gomez. Find more information about our podcast, including contact information at sdut.us slash conversation. This has been a production of the UT Podcast Network, and thanks for listening.